Hello, and in this video I wanted to talk about something that is, it's, it's sort of a, it, it's not really something that you can apply, but it's just something to keep in mind whenever you're mixing a song of any genre, or just thinking about what a mix down is. And um, <clears throat> to me, a mix down, well, I'll just explain the traditional uh, definition of a mix down first. Basically, you have your instruments in your song, and you want to mix them, their volumes, in a way that sounds pleasing. So you wouldn't want your snare drum being overly loud in a let's say a um, what genre of music would you not want that in well uh, let's do the reverse you want your snare drum kind of loud in trap music you want your snare drum kind of loud in like 80s rock so you have a general basis of what you want when you are mixing a certain genre but is there a way that you can think about going at a mix that ensures that you get a mix that sounds good on any system that you play it on. So your phone, uh, in your car, playing it on big heavy uh, sub based systems and like clubs, or if you have a 12 in your car or a 10 or a 15 or whatever it is, your TV speakers, your headphones. Um, and that's what I wanted to talk about today, sort of the philosophy of getting what would a mix look like that would translate perfectly to every sort of situation. And that's what I wanted to talk about. Because I don't, I feel like there are uh, articles and videos out there that talk about how you can get a good mix or how to get your mix to sound good or perfect, but what does that mean? And I wanted to delve into the, talking about that. Um, so let's use this track that I was doing as an example. It is just a recreation of a Metallica song, uh, For Whom the Bell Tolls. And since it is a metal song, uh, there's going to be guitars, drums, bass guitar, there's no vocals in this case, but if, let, I'll just play a short bit of it. Okay, so how I mixed this particular track is I literally just turned the volume up really loud on my speakers. I went one instrument at a time, so I turned all the levels all the way to zero. I went to the, the loudest part of my song, which I feel is here or here. I started with the most important element first, and this is all traditional like mix down thinking. You, you bring all the faders to zero, you start with the most important instrument first. You play the track. You get a good um, volume for the first one. You don't want it too loud because you want to leave room for volume for the other instruments when they come in. And you don't want it too quiet. So I did that. Next I'm going to do the these guitars, which I feel are second most important. Feel right about there is fine. We'll add the other guitar. Right there. Then we're going to do the bass guitar. All 
All right, and we're almost done. We're just going to go back and do the first guitar that comes in. So yeah, that's how I did this mix. But if you, and there's a second way, the way I just did, I just turned the volumes up really loud on my speakers. You don't want to do this for too long or else you hurt your hearing, of course. And then I pretended as if it were a live show or a live setup, and I adjusted the volumes the way I would want to hear them if it was a live concert. Uh, that's one way to do it. Another very, very popular way is use a reference track. You get a song that sounds similar to yours, but has been mixed and mastered professionally, and then you compare your mix to that as you're setting your volumes. That is the most popular and most well-known way of doing a mix, I think. Um, but what I... We're going to get to what I want to talk about now, which is if, let's say you you mix your song, you go take it out to your car, and your car has resonances at around, let's say, 294 hertz, and you you have to crank your treble because... Uh, your car system is sort of old, and you and you have to like crank it up to here. Now, is your song still gonna sound good with these adjustments? And then you would listen, of course. It doesn't sound as good as without the adjustments, right? Without the added uh, attenuations. And if you look, you'll see that there's like a, a natural shape that comes out of this song, the entire song. Just due to the instruments that are in the song. So you have some information around 2 to 4K, which is the guitars. And you have some information down here, which is the bass guitar and the kick drum. And then there's this sort of hole here which is common for uh, metal to have that hole in the middle um, just because of how guitars sound in metal and how drums sound in metal. So that means if you hop into someone's car and their car has resonances at 4K and 300 hertz. It's going to sound abysmal. It's going to sound terrible, especially if they only have one of these resonances, because at least when you have both, you can even it out. Sort of, you get the bass and the guitars, and it sounds... Uh, it's not great, but it's tolerable. But if you just have one resonance, especially in the guitar, that sounds like that'll give you a headache. That'd be a nightmare. So, what am I proposing? I'm. I you might have already guessed, but if you, the perfect mix that would translate well to any sound system, would have to be flat as flat as possible. So if we go into the song and we just pick this part and then I EQ it so that this response is flat. There's equal amounts of bass, equal amounts of mids, equal amounts of highs.
So I've done my best <clears throat> to try to get as close as a even response as I can. And uh, if I A, B it, if I remove the adjustments, and then I bring them back. <clears throat> In this way, when you do this, you are getting closer to noise. Because noise, like rain, or a fan, or an engine, or um, any sort of white noise uh, cousin, <clears throat> has a frequency response of very flat, just noise, equal energy in both the mids, lows, and the highs. So you're, when you mix in this way, although it will translate better to other systems, you are getting closer to noise. There's no character to your song when you do this. You are losing character. Just like how we don't like people that are perfectly symmetrical. It looks odd to us if a person is, their eyes are perfectly set apart, if their nose is perfectly uh, in the middle of their face, where their hair is perfectly styled. It almost seems un unhuman. And when in those imperfections are where you find the human soul, I guess, you could call it. So when you do something like this to your mix and you even it out, for the purpose of it sounding good on all systems. Because in theory, that's what will happen. If there's no weakness in your mix, where if they boosted here or there, it would cause a major problem, then what you've essentially done is just created noise. And there's no character. So let's go and do that same thing. The guitars be around 2 to 4K, so let's raise 2 to 4K, which is 3. And then let's raise, I forget what it is. But you can already tell, that is tolerable. It was, it was much worse when I was boosting this before we made the adjustments to make the frequency response flat. So we've accomplished the goal of translating this into a mix that will sound good on nearly any system because nearly any system that you put a song in is going to have some attenuations. So what we have just done is made attenuations to the song itself so that it is flat, so that any song, any sound system you played in should have no problem translating. But as I said, you are going to get into the realm of, it's just sort of, it's going to get closer to sounding like noise. That is what I wanted to talk about. And uh, it's, I was, I was just thinking to myself, what, well, how could I get like a mix that would sound perfect in every system, on every phone, on every car system of my friends? And uh, I feel although it, it's like a trade-off. You, uh, you can't have one without the other. You can't have perfect um, sound in that scenario without losing some of the character of your song. And if you... If you continue mixing like this with all your songs, you'll notice all your songs are going to have that similar sound to them, that similar sound of every frequency um, being equal to any other one. And it's just going to create sort of boring mixes over time, I would imagine. <clears throat> uh, so, yeah. I just demonstrated this with metal. You could demonstrate this with any genre of music. Um, I hope this was informative and thought-provoking and interesting 
to both people who are into music production and audio engineering and who are not. And uh, I hope to see you guys in the next one. Give me some comments in the video on anything I might have missed or any questions you have about what I said. And have a great day. Thank you.